In this screencast video lecture, we will try to look at the points related to batch culture. Already I have told about the batch culture when we are studying about the growth curves of bacteria. That is, when bacteria is inoculated in a batch culture, it forms a lag phase, log phase, tertiary phase and death phase. So these are the different phases of the bacteria that is more accurately observed when you are growing the culture there as a batch culture. In a simpler terms, if you want to say what the culture you are cultivating there in the laboratory by using a simple conical flask can be regarded as a batch culture. So that is the one that I have been shown there in the right hand side of the diagram. So it is a closed system in which culture condition vary over the time period mainly due to the metabolic activities of the organism. After inoculation, this process will be usually running in the excess of substrate. Here, nutrient concentration affects both the growth rate as well as yield of the bacteria. Now, we look at the point related to their advantages. They carry a low contamination risk due to shorter running times and the absence of a feed-in system. Feed-in system refers to a system in which you will be supplying fresh nutrient and you are taking out the used out nutrient that is referred as a feed in system. The next point is it is more suitable for organisms which tend to be genetically unstable or the one decide to be used as a mixed cultures since the running time for this kind of cultures are very less or shorter. It allows the operation of a successive growth phases together and visualize the various metabolites produced during the different growth phases. That is the one which we have studied there in the previous screencast lecture. That is the different phases of the bacterial growth. Batch culture is a prerequisite for production of ethnical pharmaceutical products as per the FDA regulations. That is on the US based regulatory authority. According to this regulatory authority, it is very important to provide the details of the origin of the material and specification of the materials that have been added during the fermentation process. Next, we look at the disadvantage of using the batch culture. A high proportion of unproductive time period is commonly present during one cycle, which is referred as a turnaround time, which can make even up to 50 percentage of the total fermentation time of this batch culture process. The next one is a batch to batch variability problem that is associated when you are going for growing organisms there in the batch culture. For example, this kind of a batch to batch variation creates a huge problem there in the beer fermentation process. That is meaning one batch of a beer produced is having a different taste and aroma compared to that of the other batch of the beer. The potential accumulation of the growth inhibitory metabolic products mainly during the stationary phase is a Another important problem with the batch culture based cultivation and it is more difficult to design and operate the batch culture when you are going for a large scale up process that is maintaining large volume of a culture broth in the batch culture system. Lastly, we look at the applications of this batch culture. It is commonly used there in the alcoholic fermentation that is beer fermentation in which a cycle may last around 48 hours. The next one, it is more useful for the secondary metabolites such as antibiotics production there in the industrial scale. And third one is for the production of biopharmaceuticals. The next one is a continuous culture. It is also referred as a continuous operation system. It is a kind of system in which fresh nutrients will be allowed to flow inside the vessel. At the same time, used out nutrients will be removed there from the vessel. So, used out nutrient and cells that are all will be removed there from the vessel. So, that is the reason it is referred as a continuously operating or continuous culture. So, in other term, the entire process will be remaining there in the equilibrium. That is the amount of nutrient flowing inside and the amount of spent out nutrients that have been taken out. During the operation process, the loss of biomass with the spent out liquid can be balanced by cell growth inside the fermenter. In this aspect, 
if you look at this system is a steady state of cultivation of the organisms. So, the other name for this is a open system, whereas the batch culture is referred as a closed system. Thus, it operates under a steady state conditions and this is a kind of a system in which it can be run under the limiting substrate concentration. Say for example, in a continuous culture, some nutrient can be made into limitation. Nitrogen or sulfur can be removed and allowed the organism to grow inside. To check what is the importance of this particular nutrient there in the organism. Instrument that is used to maintain this continuous culture is technically referred as a hemostat. Next, we look at the advantages of the continuous culture. It allows prolonged running of the culture. There is no turnaround time and hence it allows a very high productivity there. The growth rate of the cells can be maintained at an optimal level which is referred as a mu max. There is a continuous removal of potentially inhibitory metabolites that have been formed inside the system. It is relatively easy to operate. Finally, we look at the disadvantages of the continuous operation or continuous culture. It is only suitable when the product formation is growth linked process. Say, it may not be useful when you are going for production of the secondary metabolite since it is produced in a different phase that is in the stationary phase. Such kind of different phases may not be clearly observed there in a continuous culture. The reason is continuous culture is maintained at a continuous phase itself. The organisms grown in the continuous cultures are genetically stable. Unstable organism may not be successfully grown there in the continuous culture. Compared to the other method that is the closed system of cultivation, here in this open system or continuous culture there is a high risk for contamination is present. Lastly, we look at the application. What are the areas in which a continuous culture may be having more use? First one is in the production of single cell protein. Say for example, protein is a kind of single cell protein that has been grown by using this particular method. Then biological wastewater treatment commonly employs the continuous culturing of the organisms.